Kaboom! Hello and welcome to the Signature Spell Bomb, your source for Oathbreaker content. All of the decks on this channel are built for the Oathbreaker format. If you want to know more about Oathbreaker, please check out the link in the description or visit the amazing community at the subreddit r slash oathbreaker underscore mtg for more information, including rules and bans. In today's episode of the Oath Breakdown, we will be looking at a $30 deck tech. The cost of decks on this channel include shipping and the cost of our Oathbreakers. Decks on this channel are built to be affordable, fun, and provide interesting interaction for casual play. This is in order to help new players join our format. Our decks are built to be 5s to 7 on the power scale below. We will explain our power scale in a future video. On the Oath Breakdown, we break down the deck and build it back up so you can see how the deck wins and how it was designed. Now let's get into it. Today's Oathbreaker deck is Booster Pack, which is an Arlen Cord Voice of the Pack deck with Howl of the Night Pack as the signature spell. We really went crazy with the word pack there. The proud puppy mom of our deck, Arlen Cord Voice of the Pack, is a 6 mana cost planeswalker that comes into play with 7 loyalty. Her static ability reads, each creature you control that's a wolf or werewolf enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 counter on it. And her minus 2 loyalty ability says, create a 2-2 green wolf creature token. We're going to capitalize on Arlen Cord's static ability to support our pups by having them enter play as 3-3s, boosting our good boy's power and toughness. And with her minus ability, she can boost the size of our pack. All of Arlen's abilities help our pack grow big and strong. And with 7 loyalty, she can be a little hard for our opponents to remove. Her signature spell is Howl of the Night Pack. It costs 6 and a green, and we get to put a 2-2 green wolf creature token onto the battlefield for each forest we control. With Arlen's static ability, they are going to enter play with 1-1 counters on them. Our signature spell is how we are going to get the most puppies into play. We will use advantage of green ramp to play this as early and as often as we possibly can in order to boost the pack's numbers each time. Now that we have our Command Zone card squared away, let's talk about our game plan. This deck is a special focus on working around its signature spell to flood the board with lovable puppy dogs that are trained to eat our opponents. So we will feed the dogs to boost their stats and swing out with our pack. How do we win? Our goal is to grow the pack big and strong and turn our opponents into kibble. Now let's get into the breakdown. In our first section, we are going to use Ramp to help get our 6-mana Planeswalker and a rather expensive Signature Spell up and running as soon as possible. Feeder of the Pack Sakura Tribe Elder, Rampant Growth, are both spells that cost 2 mana that allow us to search our library for a basic land card and put it into play tapped. And Cultivate does the same, but it allows us to look for 2 basic land cards and put one onto the battlefield tapped and the other one into our hand. Next, we have Search for Tomorrow. It is a tuna green mana spell that lets us search our library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield, and then shuffle our library. We can also choose to suspend the card for two turns and only play one green to get this effect at a cheaper cost. Now, we're not quite done ramping yet. Let's look at our next step, where we'll use our adorable pups to help us generate even more mana. We're going to do so by capitalizing on their puppy love. Rishkar, Pima Renegade, is an elf druid creature that when he enters the battlefield we can put a 1-1 counter on up to two creatures and each creature with a 1-1 counter on it can tap to add a green mana to our mana pool. Jang Yangu, Wildcrafter, does the same thing but our creatures can tap for one mana of any color and we can minus one Jang to put a 1-1 counter on target creature. And rounding it out we have Song of Freilies for one in a green. It's a saga spell on one all of our creatures can tap for one man of any color. On two, it's the same. And on three, we put a 1-1 counter on each creature we control, and those creatures gain Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible till the end of turn. These three cards will help to support our team and our strategy to grow our pups as well as to help us ramp. Once these cards are in play, we can use them to play our signature spell, get a bunch of pups, then tap those pups to play our signature spell again the next turn. Now you might be thinking we want those cards and other cards out of her deck, and how are we going to get them? Well, we're going to fetch for them. 
In this section, we have Scala Wolf. It costs three and two green. When it enters the battlefield, we look at the top five cards of our library, and we can reveal a green card from among them and put it into our hand. Then we put the rest on the bottom of our library in a random order. Collective Unconsciousness is going to let us draw a card for each creature we control. And Shamanic Revelation is going to do the same, but if we control creatures with power four or greater, we'll get to gain four life for each such creature. Now we can assume our opponents are going to play some hard to deal with permanents that we're going to need to get rid of. So let's look at how we do that in our next step, House Broken. De Glamour costs one in a green. We choose target artifact or enchantment and our opponent has to shuffle it into their library. Moonlight Hunt is a one in a green spell that lets us choose a creature we don't control and then each creature we control that is a wolf or a werewolf will deal damage equal to its power to that creature. Return to Nature will let us choose one, destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, or exile target card from a graveyard. Beast Within is a great utility destroy spell for our deck. We get to destroy target permanent, and its controller creates a 3-3 green beast creature token. Rabbit Bite reads, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to a creature you don't control. Now let's get into the next step. How do we protect our pups? Let's look at that in Rescues. All the cards in this step will keep us from losing our board position in different ways. Wrapped in Vigor will let us regenerate each creature we control. Spirit of the Hunt will at flash speed let us boost all of our Pupperoonies powers by plus zero plus three until end of turn. An Inspiring Call will let us draw a card for each creature we control with a 1-1 counter on it, and each of those creatures will gain Indestructible till the end of turn. Probably the way this deck is going to most enjoy itself is getting as many puppies out onto the board as possible. So we're going to cover some tactics for that in our next step, Dog Call. Wandering Wolf is a 2-1, and creatures with less power than Wandering Wolf can't block it. Wolf Caller's Howl states at the beginning of our upkeep we create X 2-2 two, two green wolf creature tokens where X is the number of opponents with four or more cards in their hands. And Raised by Wolves says when Raised by Wolves enters the battlefield put two 2-2 two, two green wolf creature tokens onto the battlefield and the enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each wolf we control. Ferocious Pup enters play, and then it brings its mom along with it, creating a 2-2 green wolf creature token. Silverfur Partisan is a 2-2 with Trample. Whenever a wolf or werewolf we control becomes a target of an instant or sorcery spell, we put a 2-2 green wolf creature token onto the battlefield. This is excellent protection. If someone tries to kill one of our creatures with an instant or sorcery, we immediately get a replacement creature. Nightpack Ambusher is a 4-4 with Flash that says other wolves and werewolves we control get plus one plus one, and at the beginning of our end step, if we didn't cast a spell this turn, we get to create a 2-2 green wolf creature token in play. So with Flash, this is an excellent combat trick. The fact that it pumps or powers our whole team is amazing, and the fact that it also gives us more wolf tokens is totally on brand. Wolfbriar Elemental is a multi-kicker creature. It's a 4-4 four, four for 2 and 2 green. And when it enters the battlefield, we get to create a 2-2 two, two green wolf creature token for each time it was kicked. This is a backup to playing Howl of the Night Pack, and in that playing this can get us a bunch of creatures and avoid that tax we're afraid of. Young Wolf for 1 green is a 1-1 one, one wolf with Undying, so when it dies, it gets to come back into play with a 1-1 counter on it, then it'll get additional 1-1 counter from Arling Cord, so it is a creature that will replace itself. Howl Pack Resurgence has Flash, and each creature we control that's a wolf or a werewolf gets plus 1 plus 1 in Trample. This Trample lets us go over our opponent's defenses, and because this also has Flash, it allows us to play it as a combat trick. Lastly, we have Second Harvest. It's a 2 and 2 green mana cost instant that says for each token we control, we create a token that is a copy of that permanent. This card effectively doubles all of the puppy tokens we have at the time we play it. Now that we have all our dogs in play, how do we make them into big threats? Let's approach that in Growing Up. Evolution Sage is a 3-2 elf druid creature that says whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, we proliferate. Polybright Druid, when it enters the battlefield, we put a 1-1 counter on a creature, or we can proliferate. Plague Maw Beast says tap it, sacrifice a creature, and proliferate. All three of these creatures are excellent ways for us to make sure all of our little wolves, with all of their little 1-1 tokens provided by Arlen Cord, can grow time and time again. 
Now that we have a big pack and some big puppies, we're going to win by running wild. Overwhelming Stampede will allow all of our creatures until end of turn to get plus X plus X and Trample, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control. And Dragon Throne of Tarkir is very similar to Overwhelming Stampede. We equip it to a creature, and anytime we would pay two and tap it, other creatures we control get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is equal to the equipped creature's power. Now that we've gone through every card in the deck, let's go through the mana base. We're running Blighted Woodland. It's another way for us to just be able to sack this land and ramp a little bit. We're running Fertile Thicket. It allows us to look at the top five cards of our library. If we do, we can reveal one basic land card from among them and put it on top of our library and the rest on the bottom in any order. And Orn Reef the Vastwood allows us to tap it and put a woman one counter on each green creature that entered the battlefield that turn. Myriad Landscape enters the battlefield tapped. We can tap it for a colorless, or we can pay two and tap it to search our library for two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped. And finally, we're running 21 Forests. Now that we've gone through all the cards in the deck, let's do a quick price check. As a reminder, our deck costs are calculated using TCG Player Optimized, choosing every available card at the best price at the time of recording. The average cost for an Arlen Voice of the Pack Oathbreaker deck on Oathbreaker EDH Rec is $64.38. Our deck price is going to be quite a bit cheaper at $29.07. If you want to know more about our deck prices, I will post a link in the description with a breakdown. Now our deck was built on a budget to help introduce new players to the format, but there are ways we can improve on it. Let's go through some of those ways now. Let's take out Wolf Caller's Howl and put in Beast Master Ascension. Let's take out Ferocious Pup and put in a Bow of Nylea. Let's remove Cultivate and put in Harvest Season. Let's remove Sakala Wolf and put in Return of the Wild Speaker. Well, now that we've gone through the deck and you've seen all the upgrades, we'd love to hear what you have to think about this deck tech and about the channel in general. Please let us know in the comments below. If you like what we're doing on the channel, please like, share, and subscribe the video. It really helps out. And if you want to support us directly, please check out our Patreon. There will be a link in the description. Also, if you're interested in showing some signature Spellbomb pride, Please check out our merch. There'll be a link in the description. And if you want to connect with us on social media, please see any of the links provided here below. Once more, I'd like to say thank you to all my viewers. I can't do this without you, and I wouldn't. I can't wait to Oathbreak another deck for you next time.